Okay, now we are back. And so what have we done so far? So in our on mount, which is where we're initializing everything, we're getting a database, we're opening the database, we're initializing the database table, and then we're dumping that the database was opened, and then we're saving the database in a reference so we have access to it. So let's, I mean, the primary thing here is you want to actually query our data and see our data. So let's kind of, just for a shortcut, we're going to make it execute another query similar to what we've done here. And here we're just going to insert a test user into the database. And so to do that, we'll create a new function called test user. And it needs to be asynchronous also. And we're going to kind of follow the exact same pattern that we did here. Um, so actually, let's just copy this whole try catch block. Paste this code in here. Um, this is definitely going to be a different query that we're going to execute here. Um, so let's, we don't need this constant here. Um, but, uh, but let's change this test user created error, error, creating test user. And then uh, we need a script here to create the, the test user. Um, assumption here is that you have a basic understanding of, um, of uh, SQLite and that's, so that's why we're here and you're trying to use it. And so we already have uh, that script that query and I'll just paste it in here and we'll just quickly walk through it. And so what we're doing here is when we run this, we're gonna take our database and we're gonna run this insert into our contacts table that we just created above. A first name, a last name, and an email address, and here are the values. And I'm just putting myself in there, Aaron Saunders, Aaron at mail.com. Um, when this is successful, we should get a response and we'll log out the response to the user and we'll take a look at the console to see if it's there. And uh, then uh, we'll return true. Otherwise, there's a, if there was an error, we'll uh, show the alert. So let's go down and add the test user as the next step after we make sure a uh, table is initialized. So let's say AWIT, um, add test user. And let's run this. Let's look at our console and see what we get. Actually, you want to know what? All of these guys have been failing, my bad. Um, so even in the previous chapter, that undefined was a failure because I'm assigning the database late. It's surprising that it didn't throw an error, but let's assign the database up here. And see now if we're getting a different result. Okay, now things are working better. I'll, I'll leave a note on the previous video, but now you can see that um, there's the changes. All right, so it doesn't like unique constraint failed. So basically what it's saying is there's already a user in the database that has that name uh, with that email. So let's create a, another one. That's from my previous testing. So let's say Alan Saunders. Alan Saunders and we'll say A-L-L-E-N. All right, let's see what we get now. Okay, so it added the new user because you can see it says the changes, last ID is two, it added one change, and then we get here this changes, last ID, database, so everything worked fine. So, and then now to actually confirm it, let's do our first query. And so the idea is that on our home page, we want to execute a query to get a list of the items in a database. Now the challenge that we have is that we only have access to our database right now in app.view. There's a bunch of ways that you can manage this with state, with composables, and all these other approaches. But once again, since it's a basic intro focused on integrating SQLite, we're going to use a concept called provide and inject, provide, excuse me, and inject, which is a part of Vue.js. So let me um, kind of take that up, bring that up for a minute. Vue.js.provide. Okay, so if we look at the documentation for provide and inject, um, what we you have to use it in setup, and so you import provide, and then you just provide the object that you want to have access to, and then um, if someone needs it, then you inside the other um, object you inject it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to provide, um, and I'll include the link below, we're going to provide the database from inside of here, and then we are going to inject it in the home component. So let's go down, and after we've done all this initialization, we've added our test user, our mounting is done, then we will, um, at the end here, we will set our database. Well, actually our database is already set, um, but we'll provide it. So let's go up to the top because you have to provide inside a setup. You can't provide inside of a function. So first let's um, add provide up here. And then we'll go down inside of our setup here. We're gonna provide our database and we're gonna use a key called uh, SQLiteDB. What we're gonna do is, I'm not, I don't wanna worry about it being reactive or anything, so I'm just gonna actually provide the value, okay? So now anyone who ejects it will get the actual database, not a reactive um, proxy of it. They'll get the actual database object. The other thing that we need to do is because what we need to make sure is that we don't want to render any of the application, right? Until we have, um, until we've finished everything that we need to do on before mount, because we have a lot of asynchronous calls. And so we don't want the home page, not this, we don't want the home component trying to access the database until it's ready. So let's address that by creating another flag here. So const database init. And we're going to set that to, so actually, I think we can just keep it simple. Let, oh no, because we need it to be responsive. Um, I mean, sorry, reactive. So let's say const database init is a ref and it's, it starts out as false. So the database initially is not initialized. Database, I, database initialized. And we are going to, let's get this out of here. We are gonna use this in our template so we have to actually return it. So not this whole thing, just this part. And then what we want to do is, let's format that. We don't want to execute any of this code, i.e. render any of this until a database is initialized. So we're going to do this. And then we'll say v if. So basically don't attempt to render any of the rest of the application until we know the database has been initialized. I need to actually set the flag now. So what's happening is that I set the flag to false, but I never set it to true. So let's go down here. And after everything is all done, let's set database initialize value is equal to true. So now we know our database is initialized. Um, everything's working. And now that I've injected I provided my database here. I should be able to go to my home view and inside of my home view, um, once again, you have to use inject inside the setup. I should be able to just say inject and get access to the database. So let's go to, we're now in our home view. Let's put that code in there to get our database. And um, do, 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 do. And once again, it needs to be done inside the setup. So we need to inject, inject needs to be imported. So now we have our database and let's console log database in home. Uh, uh, that's not right, x console log. Okay. Um, let's uh, re rerun this again. Oh, in home is null. Why? So we don't have the database yet. What is going on? 
Oh, I know it's wrong. I need it to be reactive because the first time through this value is null and so that's why it's getting null. Um, I need it to push the change whenever it changes. So we need to pass it as a reactive value. All right, let's go and see if we're getting a different result now. And we are. So you see now that I'm in the home, I'm actually getting the database and you see it's giving me the raw value. Um, but really inside of our database in home, what we really want here is this. And so it's complaining because the type is of unknown. So let's say this. And so now if we go back and we look inside of Xcode, you can see data. Hmm? Oh, it's let me let me fix this. What's happening? It's throwing exceptions because the um, email that I added is already there. So now that we have our test user in, let's just kind of comment out this test user, so we don't run that function anymore. Okay, um, we set our database. Let's go back and take a look in Xcode. Okay, now everybody's happy. So we have our database in home and because we commented out this add user which was causing errors we only need to run this once only run once okay so now we actually have our database here in our home component so let's see if we can get just before we actually figure out how we're going to render it let's see if we can actually get those entries that are in the database to render from executing our database here now that we've injected it into our home component um, so what we probably want to do is first we need some place to actually hold our values. So um, we can take this comment. Uh, we'll leave that in there for now. Um, we let's inject. Let's create another reference which will hold uh, results from a query, and then we're going to similar to how we created queries in our app view. So let's just. I like to minimize the amount of code I type. So let's just actually borrow some code. So let's borrow this code here. Let's bring it over and let's create our function. But instead of adding a user, what we're going to do here is we are going to um, query, we're going to load the data. And then to load the data, uh, we're going to use our database. So let's do this. And then we don't want to insert contacts. We actually want to query the contacts. So we want to do a select star from contacts. Um, and then we don't have any parameters to pass in. And we should get a response. And the response should be a set of results and the results are in values. And so we're going to take our query results and we're going to say our query results dot value, because remember it is reactive, is equal to response ISP dot values. Because that's how we get the data back. Let's remove this console log error loading contacts. So if you run into an error, um, and then now we have to actually use load data. And so where do we want to load data? The best place to load it is when the component is mounted. So let's come down here at the bottom. And when the component's mounted, let's import that from view. We're going to call this function load data. And this function load data is going to set query results value. And we need that in the template. So we need to add it down here to our return. Okay. So just to walk through what we did, we're going to get the database. We're going to inject it. Um, actually, let's take this comment out. We don't need that anymore. Then we have this new function to actually load the data. So it's going to use this database that we got. It's going to execute this query. Let me just make sure that the query is a run. No, it's not a run. The run is for um, command, but we're going to, this is actually a query. 
So that's what you want to do. You want to query select star from contacts. And then with the response or results, we're going to take the response and we get the value from that. Sorry, not value, values. And we're going to set query results value because that's a reactive. And that should be the results from the database. And then what we want to do is for now, since we're not really doing anything yet, let's just, I think I can do this query results. Let's just display the results in the, in the uh, home page. Because you can see it's getting that something went wrong during the view component hot reload. So let's just restart it and see what we get. And command failed SQL query prepare failed near into. All right, let's see what did I do wrong. This is no into. It should be just select from context. So let's get that out of there. Run it again, and you can see we're getting our users, all my test users I shoved in there. Let's we can clean this up a little bit so it's uh, visible by doing a json.stringify. And then um, the last thing is we can wrap a pre. And there's a result. And so we're going to wrap here. The next step will be to kind of create a component to render this list properly. And then we'll move on after that.